Right, good morning, afternoon or evening, folks. Now, I'll be continuing my digital and virtual piano realism series where I speak of velocity curve settings. And in this short video, I will explain what this means, how to read the velocity curve XY table, and most importantly, how we can use this to alter the playability to suit different styles of playing and types of piano, whether it's a sing-along on an upright honky-tonk or a classical performance on a concert grand. The word velocity is defined as the speed of something in a given direction, and when I speak of key velocity, I refer to the speed with which the key is travelling at the point that the hammer is thrown to hit the piano string. If I press the key gently, it travels at a slow speed, resulting in a quiet sound. And as I apply a more forceful attack, the key speed and piano mechanism become faster, resulting in a louder, stronger sound. These degrees of loudness are measured in Italian musical terms ranging from pianissimo, or even quieter, to fortissimo, or even louder. I'm playing this into a digital audio workstation which measures and converts these different velocities in numerical figures from 0 to 127. More gentle playing will result in lower numbers, and the higher the number, the louder the sound. In the Piano Roll Editor, we can see that all of these different velocities are also coded in order of the colours of the spectrum. Lower numbers produce purples, blues and greens, whereas higher ones stray into the oranges and reds. Generally, a virtual instrument is set so that the greater the velocity number, the louder and stroke or stronger the sound. And this is what is illustrated in this XY table, where these numbers stand for the slowest to the fastest key velocity, in other words, the speed the key impacts the speed of mechanism that hits the string, while these letters stand for the quietest to the loudest dynamic, and this yellow line shows the key velocity required to correspond with each of these dynamic levels. So, as this yellow line stands, while a velocity level of 127 will render a fortissimo dynamic, velocity level 63 will render that of mezzo piano. But by altering the line's gradient, and you can see why it's called a velocity curve, level 63 will now render a mezzo forte dynamic, and now a piano dynamic. For the first two illustrations, I'm going to play the opening four bars of some Mozart, where the right-hand melody plays louder than the left-hand chords. Here we can see what I've just played in Logic, with the louder notes of the right hand in orange and red, over the quieter notes of the left hand in generally yellow. But to clearly illustrate how the velocity table works, I'm going to do something I never do with classical performances. Upon selecting to edit the region I've just recorded, I will open up the MIDI transform window in Logic, and first set all the notes to a fixed velocity of 127. Then, the left-hand notes will be selected and, using the Velocity tool, brought down to a velocity level 95, so that the left hand is playing at a lower velocity and therefore quieter dynamic than the right hand. And then, to redress the balance between right hand and left hand, we can change the velocity curve. It's important to note here that because we don't want the pianists to have to change the way they are playing, we're not changing the velocity level of these notes. We're only changing the dynamic levels produced by those same velocities in this table. In other words, how the piano corresponds to each of these velocities played by the pianist. Next, in order to really hear the shape and direction of these velocity curves, I'm playing an arpeggiated sequence. This time I'm going to quantize to 30 second notes. Then again I'm going to open up the MIDI transform window and set all the note velocities to 127. And this time I'm going to open up a crescendo. In Ivory, I'm going to turn up the dynamic range to maximum. Then I'll speed up the sequencer to 180. And I'm going to set the start and end points of cycle mode. 
And now, let's hear this sequence as a straight crescendo whilst following this red line across the velocity curve. And now, by altering this curve, we can alter the shape and intensity of the crescendo. So finally, we've been playing around and altering this velocity curve. And why this is important is because some pianos such as this upright will have a lighter touch than others, like this full-size concert grand. Some pianists prefer a lighter touch, others a heavier one. And we will go through some examples in another video. But I'd like to finish with a few bars of a classical piece played twice, each time with settings to emulate different types of piano. And with that, folks, I will see you next time.